They hate when you elevate. <laughs> ATP, what to do with your boy Clay Moore Rain? This is the ATP Combat Media Show. Shout out to all my subscribers. If this is your first time tapping into the content, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, hit your bell icon so you are getting alerts when all this content is dropping. Javante Tank Davis, prize fighter? Let's talk about it. You guys know Javante Tank Davis back from his hiatus after a one of his biggest paydays against Ryan Garcia, right? coming back this year fighting against frank martin on his face on his first pay-per-view event coming back from that from that big um fight that he had getting that big payday and stating some things in the build-up to that fight and after that fight right that this is going to be his last goal round at boxing he's got about six more fights that he plans on fighting he has a specific fighters that he's looking to fight and when he's done he plans on going off into the sunset or at least entertaining it retiring guys which is awesome we only could wish that all fighters could get all the fights all the money they can get retire at a nice young age so that they have a great quality of life still keeping a control of all their their faculties their their thinking their hearing their seeing their motor skills everything intact and that's a fighter's dream here we are in the latter part of Javante Tank Davis's career where Javante Tank Davis is looking to coordinate some legacy fights. Fights against the types of Vasily Lomachenko, um, uh, Shakur Stevenson, possibly Devin Haney, maybe it's Ephraim Lopez. Who knows? He has a list specific to him, customized to what he needs to pull out of boxing, leaving a statement in boxing, leaving his mark in boxing, leaving a legacy in boxing. And why is that significant? Well, it's significant because a lot of fighters tend to try to do these things in the first half of their career right they'll take pay cuts they'll t they'll concede to certain terms that they wouldn't do before all in the spirit of legacy getting championships becoming unified champions becoming undisputed champions in multiple weight divisions even but tank davis had the opportunity to be a prize fighter first under the tutelage of floyd mayweather jr al Heyman, pbc leonard ellerby these people were able to build around him and help him get his market value somewhere with great matchmaking, great fights where Javante Tank Davis was able to showcase some of his biggest attributes, his explosive power, his athleticism. Really crossed over well with the boxing fan base, with the boxing space in general, and built him a huge fan base, which gave him a title that he might share 50-50 with, with Canelo Alvarez as being a face of boxing a side to every negotiation that he's a part of a side to any fight that he's a part of a lot of perks come with that but now in the latter half of his career being that in the first half of his career he wasn't calling out any fighters he was the guy to come to he let the matchmakers in pbc he let floyd mayweather he let leonard ellaby he let the people he bought into the process with who he believed could take him there make the decision on who his fights were going to be but this part of his career as he's moved away from Mayweather promotions and has his own promotional company and is a boss in his own right Devontae Tank Davis for the first time in front of the world is interested in fighting certain fighters and how does that look for Javante Tank Davis well the perk is you're the a-side what is the other side of the conversation what is the con the con is the accountability now it seems that it falls on Javante Tank Davis's shoulders to put together these fights, to send these offers out. There's something about wanting to fight a fighter. What does that do? Well, what it does is it gives that fighter a certain market value. It, it automatically gives them a higher market value because this fighter becomes something you want. As any item on a shelf that you may want to buy, the demand for the item is what stakes the, the price value, the market value of that item. And when Javante Tank Davis says he wants to fight Shakur Stevenson, Shakur Stevenson goes from a fight that could just happen, take it or leave it, to a fight that needs to happen at the right price. Same thing with, with, with Vasily Lomachenko and everybody else who's on that list who understands how this works. Now, think about it, guys. Let's be fair about it. At this point, Javante Tank Davis doesn't, in my opinion, bring as much legacy to the conversation as much as he brings the payday. 
to the conversation. So these fighters understand that. And they understand if they're going to go and get into a fight with Javante Tank Davis, that money's going to be the topic du jour. It's going to be the topic. And it's going to be a different talk when you want to fight me versus, you know, me wanting to fight you in reverse, right? So it looks like Tank is dealing with that right now as Vasily Lomachenko fell back out of negotiation. Some people want to call it a duck. It's okay. Uh, but I'll just stick with fell back out of the negotiations and decided that he's not going to be ready to fight until uh, next year. Put Tank in a pickle in a complicated situation being that he needs a dance partner for already locked in MGM um, Arena in Las Vegas on November 2nd. Who is he going to fight? If it's not going to be Vasily Lomachenko, a lot of people thought that naturally the next fight should be Shakur Stevenson. Well, Shakur Stevenson said, listen, they reached out to me. I let them know I'm available. I'm waiting on an offer from them, an idea of what date we need to be doing this so I can get ready for it. But it said at this point, we still not have not have we still haven't received an offer. And as a good fighter should do, a fighter who's concerned with their career should do at the tail end of a top ranked deal that he doesn't that he was not happy with. He didn't agree with the matchmaking. He didn't agree with the attention and the marketing that he got to build his market value. What is Shakur Stevenson naturally going to do? Well, he goes and he looks for somebody else who can give him what, what top rank couldn't. And Eddie Hearn stepped up to the table and said, listen, I can get you what you need. Let me bring you over here, overseas. Let's get you on a Riyadh card in front of a whole different demographic. Let's build up your market value and get you where you need to be. So when Tank Davis sends that offer, you'll be ready and you'll be able to come to the table, a better, um, a higher market market valued um, fighter, therefore getting giving you negotiation leverage that you don't have right now. As Tank Davis is figuring out what he's going to do and Leonard Ellaby and Eddie Hearn and all the powers that be have agreed that this fight will happen no matter what, but it will be at the right time. They're concerned about the rollout being correct for this fight. And as they should, as Tank Davis is signing a deal with Amazon Prime for $200 plus million, there's a lot riding on all of Javante Tank Davis's um, era legacy fights being very profitable fights, especially with the Shakur Stevenson fight being that most people would agree that the only person they can picture beating a Tank Davis, one of a few being Shakur Stevenson, maybe a T.O., right? Most people don't consider these other fights that um, Javante Tank Davis legitimately wants to fight as that huge of a threat for Javante Tank Davis. So understanding that and putting, keeping that in perspective, it does put more pressure on everybody involved as far as the promoters are concerned to have the correct rollout for this fight. Now, you combine that with the fact that Shakur has now signed with Match with Matchroom and has recently, two days ago, hurt his hand, right? He went ahead and hurt one of the tendons in his hand, had to have emergency surgery. He's had to cancel his fight he had with Joe Cordina. Looks like he's going to be out of the game for the next six months or so, give or take a, a month or two here or there. It looks like that's what we have to look forward to. What does Tank do until then? You're hearing rumors of Ryle Venezuela being in the conversation. I've even heard rumors of Lamont Roach. It doesn't matter who it is. At the end of the day, whoever it is, is going to be somebody that Tank is calling. And when Tank calls that person, depending on who it is, negotiations may not be as simple as they used to be, being that now they understand that he's in a situation where he needs to make certain fights. Don't let this go over your head. There's something about wanting a fight rather than just taking a fight. Wanting a fight puts a whole different look to a negotiation wanting anything you go into a dealership and you look at a car and you want it that puts a whole different perspective from the guy trying to sell you the car on what he has to do to sell you the car and how much he can make from you right so it's going to be interesting to see javante tank davis navigate through this new world that he's in making fights putting fights together making offers that are that are uh, attractive to the fighters that he's he's looking to make the fights with and at the same time honoring whatever agreements he made with amazon prime to and pbc to to lock in those huge guarantees that he's locked in to have it has to make sense if it doesn't make dollars it doesn't make sense you guys let me know what you think in the comments though the new version of javante tank davis the legacy fighter the fighter who's running out here making fights what do you think he's gonna have to come to the table with to make this work or is it am i just blowing smoke in the air and there's nothing to it and tank will just make any fight and nobody and everybody at the same time will fight tank as soon as like tank snaps his fingers i don't know hindsight says that's not true but maybe the future will be a little clearer than what we've seen in the past leave it in the comment let me know what you think shout out to my subscribers again 
This is Claymore Rain. It's the ATP Combat Media Show. You know, you guys know how we carry it. If this is your first time tapping into content, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell icon so you're all getting alerts when all these content is dropping. But at this point, we out. <laughs>